Joni, I think I remember you saying, but I just want to confirm this, um, that directly above the Buckman Diversion, on the same side of the river, there's a huge bank of toxic stuff that is considered to be a toxic site of a whole lot of stuff that already has washed down from the canyons mm -hmm. yeah. probably over decades that's in that big bank <laughs> of gravel and sand and dirt just sitting there and they knowing that that was there they went ahead and located the intake for the Buckman diversion directly below that and I'm not sure exactly the distance but I think it was pretty close wasn't it and and so I, I don't think it would even take a major storm event. It's just like normal life, a little bit of snow, a little bit of rain is going to cause that stuff to percolate out of that toxic bank right into the Buckman diversion. I mean, is that, is that right, what I'm recalling? Um, that the plutonium that's sitting there, it's been sitting there for 60 years, since the 1950s, during the drought. But given... Given the impacts of the Los Conches fire and burning the top of the watersheds, you know, the Los Conches, the Cerro Grande fire burned lower. The Los Conches fire burned the top of the watersheds. So now we have complete, just flushing is going to occur. And it's going to bring down boulders and trees that could create dams. We don't know where but dam situations that could mobilize that plutonium in the soil. It hasn't been, it was just by chance that they found it by doing some core holes. And it hasn't, it's, they did a line of core holes parallel to the river and perpendicular to the river. But they haven't done any grid sampling in this area to the north of the, so to the north of the Buckman. And so, the area where the plutonium is located that they found, that the New Mexico Environment Department found, is about two football fields away from the diversion site. So the concern is, is that this plutonium could be mobilized. And it's plutonium-238, so it's got a half-life of 80 years, so it's very active. And if you, drink, if you drink it, if you're pregnant and you drink it, it's not going to be good. And so those are the things that deeply concern us, is that these contaminants cross the placenta, that these contaminants will sit, once you drink the water, it'll sit in your gonads, and it will irradiate your eggs and your sperm. And so that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about future generations. We're talking about the people that are in kindergarten right now that are drinking this water, the standards, as this, this gentleman was talking about, the standards are for a reference man. Someone who weighs 154 pounds. Someone, a man that weighs 154 pounds, that's 24 to 27 years old, that eats a Caucasian diet. He's, he's not somebody that eats deer from the Buckman area. He's not somebody that goes out and harvests herbs. He's not somebody who goes into the sweat lodge using our water to put on the stones. This is, this, is a, this is an Anglo man who lives in an urban environment that has no way of knowing. And that's what the standards are based on. They're not based on what happens here in northern New Mexico or indigenous communities or land-based communities. It doesn't address somebody who grows their own food, who hunts, who drinks the water. Those increase, those factors, factors increase the risk of somebody getting cancer. Hmm? Children. And children, and infants, and fetuses. What do we have? One more question? Two more. Two? Okay, good. No, no. Thanks. Joni, tell me if I'm wrong on a point of history. Back in the 90s, when we were dealing with the gasoline contamination of the Baca Street uh, well, you know the uh, issue had come up with the rainy galleries. As I understand what the city of Santa Fe did, I don't know if Mike Hammond was the director then, it made a contract with San Ildefonso, 
which is north of the Ottawa Bridge, where there would not have been any contamination coming down from Los Alamos. None of this would have been a concern. However, the contract that was made was only to do the rainy galleries, not to say if that was successful as it was, well, then the Buckman diversion could have been located there. If, am I right or wrong? <coughs> I don't, I don't know that history as well, but in the early days of the Buckman, like 2002, there were, the rainy system was being tested in the river. I think that there were some political issues between the Pueblo, because they own the bottom of the riverbed. So there's some, there was something that happened that I don't know what happened between the Pueblo and the city and the county, and probably Las Campanas. You know, one of the most twisted <coughs> aspects of all of this is, like, what happened so that Las Campanas was part of our water system. So this is like, um, it could be a Twin Peaks kind of soap opera kind of thing if somebody wrote it up, but I, I don't know. But I think it's really important to remember what happened at the highway department and the PCBs that were found in the basement and how that migrated really quickly towards those wells at the, at the 